Hello there. We'll see if uh, I'm going to hit reload here. I believe we are live on Facebook right now. I'm Stephen Wirth. I'm president of Animation Resources. And I'm here with Michael Woodside, vice president of Animation Wood... Uh, Ma Animation Woodside... <laughs> Vice President of Animation Resources. That's true. So we're very presidential today. We're presidential and vice presidential. How are you doing today, Steve? I'm doing pretty good. I think I have more vice than you do, though. Oh. More vices. So, uh, but today, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit reload here. We'll we'll kind of start slow because we want people to be able to find us and and uh, know that we're live streaming. But today we're actually going to talk about live streaming. But to get started here, let's see if I can find us. Are we on? Maybe we're on. Oh, let's keep sure oh look, we are. Oh, awesome. and one person is watching, and it keeps going away. As I love technology. There we go. Look, there's us. See, and if I click on this, it comes up, and maybe we can actually see your comments, because we'd kind of like to, to uh, get you folks involved here uh, and maybe answer some questions and stuff as we go. Oh, look. It's Pez. Pez says, hi, guys. Hi, hi Pez. Pez. Why aren't you at the board meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Today was our uh, monthly board meeting. Uh, uh, we have great great people behind uh, Animation Resources. That's David Hoffman, who is uh, uh, one of our, our primary guys. He's the guy who uh, makes sure everybody knows what it is we do. Um, we also have uh, Tabor Dunapace here, who is our uh, director of membership, if you ever have trouble logging in, he's the guy to, to talk to, and um, uh, who else? Jojo Baptista, who is the, our treasurer, he's the one who takes care of all the money we don't have, and uh, what, what, why don't you introduce Paul? You can, Paul hmm. Anderson, our Director of Documents, Secretary. Uh, he's waving, but you can't mine. see him wave because he's behind the camera. But. <laughs> Both got these bright Hawaiian shirts on today. Oh, I I should have worn my Hawaiian shirt today. What's what's wrong here? Send a memo out. Well, our, your Hawaiian shirt has got us up to four viewers. So All right, we're off on a start. Now, you actually go back with uh, the Animation Archive quite a ways, right? I do. Uh, as soon as I moved out to Los Angeles from Florida in two thousand eight, actually two thousand eight September sixth. So oh wow, years. it's an anniversary. Yeah. Uh, I immediately went onto the uh, archive because I knew the work that you were doing and I wanted to meet you and my friend Danny had already come to meet. He's like, you gotta come see this. So I came over uh, and it was amazing being able to see all the artwork that you had stored and not just the artwork but the context that you brought to it was amazing. So mm -hmm. I remember I kept coming back and helping digitize art and uh, just trying to immerse myself in it. And where have you gone? Uh, stayed in California, mm -hmm. uh, but through all the research that I've done and um, different schools that I've gone through, I was able to uh, become an animator uh, at Disney Animation Studios. So I've been there for five years now almost. Wow. And uh, working hard. That's pretty good. What films you worked on? I uh, started there during Wreck-It Ralph and then worked on every film since. So Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, and Moana. That's pretty good pretty fun. Yeah, and, uh, uh, oh, oh, this is great. Pez is, Pez is doing, uh, doing advertising already. He's, he's just shared our, uh, our link to our, uh, board of directors, uh, information page, so you can click through that and, and hear all about it. Um, what we're going to talk about today here, this is a podcast podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, we're talking about our plans for our new podcasting equipment. I'll kind of explain what it is that we've got here. We've got, this is, this is our meeting room, which is uh, my rumpus room in the back of my house. And uh, we've installed lighting so that you can see us. Um, we've got sound equipment so you can hear us. And we've got one of these new, brand new Mevo cameras. The, it's a really fabulous thing. It, it streams directly to Facebook. That's how you're seeing us right now. Um, it's a little tiny camera, just this big. I can't show you the camera on camera because the camera can't shoot the camera while it's on camera with the camera, you know. But uh, it's a little tiny camera, just like a little tube, just this big. And uh, the nice thing about it is it shoots in 4K and then allows you to crop. So um, uh, 
Michael over there is running our uh, our camera thing. He can actually cut between us as we talk. So, for instance, I'm talking right now. But I thought I might have something to say, so I'm going to throw a few words in, and we're going to look at my face. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fancy? And that's all being done with one camera. That's the amazing thing about it. It's it's a brand new camera that just came out. And uh, the the thing about podcast is... You, we have a lot of information to share, and we want to get it out there. But the problem is, is that editing video and shooting video and doing multiple camera angles and takes and dialogue and music and all that kind of stuff, cutting it all together, is so labor intensive that we just it bogs you down. And and I really want to get information out there fast and uh, get it to the people who need it. And I think that this system where we're all set up, all the stuff just is always set up, we pull it out and uh, immediately go online, is going to really, really change uh, our interaction with our members. Uh, We've had a lot of conversations in here during our board meetings where we think, like, it would be amazing. If I were a student, I would have loved to have heard that right then. So the ease with which we can do these podcasts will help us be able to get that information out as fast as possible without having to think, well, we have to edit it, and by the time we post it, it's not going to be relevant anymore. So hopefully we'll be able to do these quickly. The other thing is that um, we're not just in Los Angeles. Um, we're an organization that is using the Internet to hit the entire world. So what we really want to do is, is to use these podcasts to build a foundation for setting up satellite organizations in uh, other parts of the world so that if you have five like-minded people in your own area, say London or uh, New York or, or um, uh, Chicago, if you've got a group of people who want to be animators and, and, and want to uh, share information and, and gain information and learn, uh, you can create your own satellite organization of animation resources, your own creative league, and we'll share our information with you, and you can create information that gets shared back with, with us and with the entire network of all of the chapters of Animation Creative League. That's the next step beyond podcasting that we're, uh, we're planning. I, I don't want to go into too much detail on that now because we'll do a podcast on that, right? All day. <laughs> But we've got a lot of ideas for podcasts, and what I want to do is I'd, I'd like uh, to let you talk now, because Michael is going to be the, uh, the spear point for, uh, for our podcast initiative. And uh, we've had a, a brainstorming session with the board of directors and come up with a bunch of ideas for different types of podcasts. And I'd like you to fill us in on, on the sorts of things we have planned. And I'd like all of the people out there on the podcast that are listening to this right now to feedback in the comments if you think that's a really good idea we'll move the priority of that up if it's something if you have ideas for things you'd like to see then just let us know through the comments and we will um, definitely go to work on that because we got to serve our community and, and build a community so what sort of ideas uh, do you have about uh, the podcasting do you, you have uh, plans to take over the world like me well, slowly. I want to do it with a, with a smile so people don't realize it's happening. Uh, the first thing we want to do is try to introduce our board. I think we have an exciting board of directors, so uh, being able to talk to, with them individually and hear their story and what brought them to Animation Resources, because I think we all have different backgrounds, but we have a very similar path that brought us here. And I think that's a path that a lot of artists have, a drive within them to find some information that can help uh, inform who they want to be as an artist. And I know that once you came to uh, the archive, uh, I always mention that, that I love the kids that come in that are all excited at first, and then they get the deer in the headlights look. And it really helps to be, to know a community, uh, to be able to go beyond uh, your own little local area. Yeah, I'm, I remember I... Steve has a very particular view of cartoons, and I thought, like, I'll, I'll show him someone, someone's that he maybe hasn't seen yet that he'll think are amazing. And so I show him these cartoons, like, right? And then he's like, Michael, let's just take a look at this. And he pulls up, like, a German silent film that accomplishes the same thing, but with a lot greater detail, and it's a lot more emotionally compelling. And you think, 
I wouldn't have gotten this on my own if I was just studying on my own. There's no way that I'm going to Google search, like, well, I'm looking at cartoons, so I think I'll look up a German silent film that I've never heard of. So having a community of people who have been through this search kind of guide you and, and also encourage you along the way is been huge. So we hope that by introducing each member of the board, maybe uh, they can talk to you personally about your story or uh, maybe encourage you to look down a different path that you haven't thought of before. Uh, we also, one of the things we're most excited about here is the animation archive. That's yeah. sort of what this whole thing is built around. And without, there's plenty of detail with it on our website, but Steve has uh, these ideas of putting together a very clear, simple podcast to give you guys an idea of what we offer at the archive and what exactly that can do for you in your career. Because I think everyone asks, like, silently, if not out loud, what do I get out of this? And yeah. I think Steve's very, uh, he's great at letting people know exactly what is special about the archive, and we're all here because of it. So The other thing about that is that people have an idea that Animation Resources is the website, it's our, our podcasts, it's the things that you see on the internet. It isn't necessarily just that. In fact, that's actually the tip of the iceberg compared to what we do. Our database is something that only our volunteers that are here every week have been able to see. Um, but I, we have plans to bring that to people in the future. We have 150,000 high-resolution scans that we've done at 1,200 dots per inch. We have um, uh, over 7,000 digitized animated films and 1,000 artist biographies that are all in a database that you can search. Uh, at this point, it's too big to be able to put it all online for everybody. Um, our server costs would, would uh, make us all broke immediately. But that's what we're working towards. In this video that I'm working on right now, I want to I wanna show how the database works and what it is that we're aiming towards. Because Animation Resources as a group doesn't think small. We think big. And we have plans that go off into the future. We've already been in existence for 10 years and have come a tremendous amount of way in that 10 years, but there's so much further that we could go, and, and we want our members to really understand what it is that we do, and, and the archive is, is at the center of that. The other thing is, I think a podcast about how to apply reference would be really useful as well, because a lot of people look at the website and they see the pretty pictures, and it isn't just pretty pictures. This stuff embodies uh, concepts that fundamental principles and I think that if you have the analytical mind to be able to break it down and figure out what it is that you're looking at you can apply that to your own work and and uh, it's not just inspiration uh, when I first started out the old timers like like Frank and Ollie and, and Mark Davis and Mike Law and, and Bill Scott and Art Babbitt they were all friends of mine I knew these guys and I worked with them doing volunteer work um, and they were there you could ask them questions they tell you how they did it and none of those guys are around anymore but all of the things that they told me are encapsulated in the, in their work in their films and in their artwork so you don't need to have Frank and Ollie to write a book for you they've written their book in every film they ever produced so um, I think a podcast about proper application of reference would be would be a really good one. Yeah, I love that. I think uh, we'll get to something to think about as we go through all these is that the point of all of these podcasts is sort of the mission statement for our group, which is to help inform artists today how they can utilize the decisions from the past to push their artwork forward. So it's not necessarily looking back and saying, we should do rubber hose again. It's thinking, what worked for Rubber Hose that I could apply in this specific situation? How can I become a better artist based on what these masters have already learned? So I'm excited for any of these podcasts to point towards that. Yeah. What else we got? We have a lot of artists that we've lined up that we're hoping to bring in just to talk about their journey. Um, what exactly inspired them to become an artist in their specific field. Um, some of the lessons that they've learned along the way and also sort of the steps that it took to become whatever position they hold. Mm -hmm. So whether it's story or background design or animation uh, directing, we want to talk to them about how what were the real steps that it took to get there. 
because everyone has a different journey and there's not a very clear specific way for uh, someone to get to that point but I think we'll, we'll discover that the through line for everybody is a passion to keep learning and also to find out that they were wrong to get excited <laughs> by the idea of like, oh, I have something else. I thought it was this. It's going to be something else. So I'm excited to talk to these professionals and kind of geek out professionally in front of them. Uh, Clay Cadis did some great yeah. animation podcasts. That great. If you don't know about that, I mean, Google the name and, and look it up. He's got an archive of fantastic uh, audio interviews. Um, and we're just going to pick up and continue where, where he left off and, and bring it to, to uh, the video level, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing that we would like to do is, similar with how we talk to the artists, we just want to bring in somebody and say, what is necessary for a storyboard revisionist? Just pick a, pick a job and then talk to somebody who, or even a roundtable, who uh, has knowledge about that subject and can help guide students who are on their way to that career, kind of get an idea for how they can start on the right path. What to expect, what the studio is going to be looking for to hire them to do. A lot of times uh, a student will have a portfolio that has a million different kinds of things in it that they're never going to be applying for because, for instance, character design right out of school, you're not going to end up being a character designer right. probably. So um, uh, I think it's good to give uh, students a little bit of that context so that they know where they're going and they know what to expect so that they can craft their pitch to the studio to hire them in in a way that the studio says, yes, this is what we need and, and bring them on. And I think one of the most valuable things that people I didn't know is everyone wonders, how do I get the job? How do I get the job? And then once you get the job, how do I keep the job? How do I keep the job? <laughs> that's, a, that's a totally different thing. And, you know, everyone wonders, if I get the job, they'll love me. Like, no, uh, that's not guaranteed. You I, get I, the job and then you... you apply principles to help push yourself as an artist and they see that in you and they think we want to keep this person so that they can continue pushing themselves and pushing us as a studio. Or I know exactly what you're saying because uh, a lot of times I, I talk to kids that, to me a kid is 25 years old by the way, uh, I'm, I'm that ancient, but I talk to kids that seem to think that, that getting a job in animation is the it's like a prize they win. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they reach out and grab that brass ring in the on the merry-go-round. Okay, now I've made it. I'm an animator. I'm I'm uh, I'm finished. You know, now I now I can just sit sit back and uh, and be famous. But it doesn't really work that way. And and the great animators I've known, from Bakshi to Grim Natwick, um, uh, all told me that they still study and they still try to drive themselves forward and they're constantly trying to go go further with what they did. Um, Grim Natwick told me that that he was studying into his 90s. He was 90 years old and every day he set aside an hour every day at his drawing table to to open up an art book for for reference and infor information and inspiration and to sit there and draw and, and force himself to do things that he hadn't done before. At 90. At 90 years old, yeah. He lived to be 100 years old and continued uh, working and drawing into his late 90s, and the only reason he stopped was that his, uh, his eyesight started failing him. So, uh, and I talk with Bakshi on the phone all the time, and he's always talking about what he's thinking about and how he's working. It, it's a lifelong process. It is. It's. It's a. You know. They. It's kind of a truism, but uh, it's a journey. It's not a destination. Yeah. yeah I remember hearing. Uh, there was a story about Frank and Ollie. That somebody asked, I think Frank, what his favorite thing that he animated was. And he had a hard time thinking of it because he was so critical of his previous work. Mm -hmm. So he's like, Oh, I might have had one Mickey drawing that I liked. Like you've done thousands of drawings. Have you liked one of them? It's just probably his next thing was the thing. Yeah, that you you're like learning and you're right? picking up, and especially at ninety, if you're if you're setting aside an hour, it's not so that you can impress your boss. One of my great friends, Neil Richmond, who is a, a computer animator, he tutored Frank Thomas in computer animation. Wow! And uh, uh, I got to sit in with him a few times while while uh, Frank was doing his his wireframe tests and stuff, and it, it was a, it was really great to see 
someone who was that imbued in, in the history of animation to be interested in the future of animation. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, back on topic. <laughs> That's so exciting. Uh, one thing that we were just talking about today was um, if you don't want to work within a studio, what are the do's and don'ts, the strategies of becoming a successful in independent animator or independent filmmaker? Uh, I think a lot of people assume a certain thing about independent. and uh, Yeah, that you just get to do whatever you yeah, want. Just and, load it up uh, on Kickstarter. And then, That's fine as long as you're, you know, you you have uh, an independently wealthy family, sure. But uh, if, if you do, uh, if you do contact. invest in my film, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's exciting. I think a lot of people, because uh, you hosted a great talk a while back with Ralph Bakshi about mm -hmm. um, the just the capacity that we have as artists today to create something and finish something um, without the help of a studio. So the the ability to just get some people together, like-minded people together, and finish a project, I think that'll be an exciting thing to unpack. I've actually talked on that subject with Ralph further, and the other thing that he didn't, he wasn't fully aware of at that point, but since has done his Kickstarter and done a film himself, is the ability to interact with your audience is entirely different than it used to be. You know, when you make a TV cartoon, which is what I've done most of my life, is television animation. Um, when you make a TV cartoon, it goes on the air and, you know, maybe you have a party at your house and, and everyone's eating Cheetos and watching the film you just finished. But you have no idea what's going on all over the world. People are looking at your film and you're not getting the feedback from them directly because they're in front of a box and, and nobody sees what anybody else is reacting. But on the Internet, you know, I, I'm sitting here with my iPad open right now and I can see all the comments as they come up it's it's a whole new world uh, Frizz Freeling used to have to slip five bucks to the projectionist at the Alex Theater in Glendale to run his film and then he'd sit in the back with a notepad and, and make notes about what worked and what didn't work if it didn't work he didn't do it again if it did work he did it in the next cartoon and that's how you grow as an artist and and the internet gives you tremendous possibilities for that, and that has never existed before. That's not even technology reproducing something that already existed. It's something entirely new. Yeah, it'd be a shame to waste that. Yeah. Um, Harness it. We have a, a few lined up in an educational series of podcasts that should be exciting. We, we've done one with Tabor. Uh, he did one about warming up sketching. And that should be on our site if you uh, look back on there. On the members out, only page. Yeah. Members only. Members only. Uh, we have more of those planned for the future. Um, we also want to talk a little bit about how to get the most out of your college if you're in college now. Um, I think our educational expectations are similar to if we get to the studio. Like, we made it. We're here. We did it. And if you get to college, like, I went to a good school. That's not all. You need to push farther and uh, really like apply yourself in a way that sets you apart. And so I'm excited to unpack how to succeed in an educational facility like that um, while, while you're there. Because I think we've talked to a lot of people who feel like maybe their education failed them. And I think yeah. we have an opportunity to help uh, guide people who are within that system. And in a sense, that really isn't fair to say, oh, my college failed That's me. True. Because the college isn't a place where you pay people to, to give you an education. It's up to you to, to get an education. And the college is just a, a forum for learning. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of students don't realize that until after they're out of college. Uh, and they don't realize that education is something that you do for your entire life. Uh, as long as you're alive, you should be educating yourself. Mm -hmm. So just having the right information on that at the right time. You know, I, I love it when, when people discover animation resources when they're in high school because yeah. then they really know how to grab on and take advantage of all of the possibilities instead of just doing the assignments as they're handed to them and getting a, you know, an A or a B and thinking that that's good enough because um, I've been in animation for 30 years now and I don't think I've ever been asked where I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's always what can you do. Yeah, I've never provided a diploma on my interviews. It's always <laughs> it's just based on a demo reel. It's the yeah, work. It's all your work. It's portfolio, portfolio, portfolio. And the past things on your resume, the, the things you can point to, I, I helped make this. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, we've done a few of these already, but Steve has a ridiculous library of uh, magazines and books that nobody else has, and he's generous enough to do book looks for us. So he just flips through them, talks about the context of when this was printed and how uh, the audience would have reacted to it at the time, and then also we get a chance to see the beautiful line work or color work or shape design, and uh, things that really aren't utilized as, as frequently today with uh, most of the magazines being photographs. Well, the amazing thing is is that we have eBay now, which I call the greatest archive of Western civilization that ever existed. And you can go to eBay and find uh, a magazine from 100 years ago with, with uh, Klimt drawings in it, you know, or... or uh, or Doré, or, or uh, amazing artists, and they're selling for $5, $10, you know. Yeah. It, it's amazing how our museums have dwindled down to tiny little collections of objects, and our commercial things like eBay are, are the huge museums of, of, um, of the, the history of the past couple hundred years of our, our uh, civilization. Hmm. So what I do is I just uh, follow eBay and when I see something that's important I grab it and, and uh, uh, we don't have an acquisitions budget at Animation Resources so everything you see that's scanned either came from someone who brought it to us who that they own it or it comes from my own collection and the idea is that once we've digitized it it can be shared with people all over the world. It isn't the physical object isn't limiting its ability to um, to share anymore. So, if we can put it on on podcast, that's even better. I remember the first time I was in your office and you got this amazing old book, and it was like one of those magical covers, and you're like, "All right," you just rip the cover off, and it's like, Whoa! and then I said, "It's not about the book." It was like, if I have a book here, you and four other people are going to see it, but I'm going to scan it, and thousands of people can see it, and it, just that idea of, you know, it's not about the binding of the book it's about what's inside so i'm excited i, I busted the binding on more books than i can i can mention um when you press it on a flatbed scanner you want to get a nice flat scan you know, i think if you've seen any of the digital archives uh online a lot of times you know they got that curve you know from the center of the book because they're very careful with their books because um they're being loaned to them by libraries or or something like that but with artwork, if it's bending around the corner, all the proportions start shifting. Right. So it's very important with with um, with images that the images be scanned perfectly flat. So I pull out a knife and I cut the binding down the middle and start pulling the signatures of the pages apart and put them on the scanner. And, and our great scanners, Benny and James, uh, go in and, and uh, get us absolutely perfect scans. Once we've done that, that book exists forever. As long as um, we keep our backups going, we have uh, 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 a copy of that forever, and we can share it over the internet for the entire world. Yeah, a lot of the books that you get, uh, Steve actually will convert into ebooks, and that gets passed out to our membership. So our membership gets reference packets uh, every three months or so? Every other month. Every other month. And those packets are kind of a peek into what the animation archive Holds. So as as amazing as those books are, recently there's been some amazing sketches gone through and the cartoons that are provided, those are just a piece of what we have. Yeah. And so hopefully in the future uh, we'll be able to use this podcast to reach more people and then all of uh, any membership funds are just going right back into providing more content for the members. So Yeah, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, which means that Every cent that we raise goes right back into serving um, the worldwide animation community. So it, it's very important that you all become members because what you're doing is is you're investing into the into your artistic culture essentially. So uh, I forget what I was saying. Do you? Remember? We're talking about 
uh, the, the benefits of the membership. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was saying that, you know, everyone always says, you know, milk call Freddie Moore and that, that sort of thing. The, you, the people that they already know. But the great thing about the reference packs is that Animation Resources shares with you the things you don't know about but should. And uh, uh, that is incredibly valuable. Did we lose it again? No, I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness, I'm panicking. <laughs> Paranoid now. <laughs> Am I live? Am I alive? <laughs> Is anybody out there? Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's an exciting time. But one of the most exciting parts of this is the reason why we're doing it live is so that we can get feedback from our members and from people who are interested in becoming members. So if there's something that we didn't cover that you'd like for us to host a podcast on, our network is connected to any kind of job in the industry, and we'd be happy to search out a specific topic for you guys. So if there's something you want to hear that maybe you haven't uh, heard us speak about, let us know in the comments or on our Facebook pages. Um, you'll be able to guide this. So we're, what we're excited about is giving you guys information that you need, but also if there's information that you need that we're not aware of, we're happy to bring that to you. Yeah. So That's great. Yeah, I'm excited to, to put all this together. And we should be rolling it out. We're trying. Oh, is that is that all of our ideas? Yeah, Are we out yeah. of ideas? I mean, the main thing that we want to do again is to <laughs> let our artists think like artists, and uh, all of our podcasts are pointed towards how to think better like an artist. And we're all learning along the way. It's not like we're giving lectures on how you can. Yeah. It's things that we've learned and things that we're learning, and uh, it's an exciting thing to be part of. I can. Early. I'll give a little bit of a sneak peek into something that I've been. Uh, uh, talking about over the past couple of weeks, um, um, Ralph Bakshi has heard that we're doing podcasts now, and uh, he's interested in doing a podcast where he talks about his creative process. Wow! Which is it, it's it, Ralph always has amazing insights because um, the rest of the the business doesn't think like Ralph. Ralph thinks like an artist and a lot of people in animation think like this is my job and I just you know I, I am an in-betweener I'm a you know it, the old time kind of way of thinking where I just do my job and I go home. With Ralph he is a cartoonist through and through and an artist and an animator and every part of his essence is that and he wants to talk with young kids because he's always found that the young people in animation are where the excitement is. And uh, he wants to do a, an in-depth discussion of how he worked, um, how he broke down his projects, how he got inspiration, um, all of those things. Uh, I only got one question in to him last time I talked to him, and that one, he hit the ball out of the park. I can't wait to, to do more. We have to work out some technical issues because he's in New Mexico and I'm here in Los Angeles. So um, hopefully we can set up a, a podcast that we can remote control without it dropping out like we just did here. We'll but uh, that would be a, a very exciting thing because Ralph, I think, is has his finger on the future of animation more than anybody I've ever met. Um, I think he has an awful lot to say, and uh, I, I'm, I would love to hear it myself. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, so what we're doing here is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the, the reference packs. Um, on our advisory board, um, Steve Stanchfield is, is a great supporter of animation resources. Uh, he came by a couple of weeks ago and brought us stacks of discs of uh, animated films that have never been released uh, since maybe the 50s on, on television. So uh, we're in the process of processing those to put them on. Right now we have uh, uh, three Columbia Color Rhapsodies. Where do you see Columbia Color Rhapsodies nowadays? In virtually nowhere. Animationresources.org. Animationresources.org, uh, if you're a member. So. Um, I, I really think that, you know, students spend so much on tuition and books and all of those things, it really behooves them 
to spend another $60 a year and be a part of Animation Resources. Because I think that if you're a member of Animation Resources, then you understand better how to take advantage of that tuition and those school books and those classes you're taking. And it gives you a wider perspective so that you don't end up at the end of college like the deer in the headlights. Um, if you're already in animation, you're a professional, uh, as long as you haven't turned off your brain and you're still interested in learning, there's an ocean of great material in cartooning and illustration and, and uh, uh, film and animation that all can inform you and uh, make your work better. Uh, so I hope everybody considers seriously joining Animation Resources. Um, um, it's done by people like us who care. We have the passion for animation. And uh, uh, yeah, you got join. This. Oh, it's Pez. Pez, Pez don't call Pez. us on the line that we're we're streaming from. <laughs> Pez. Pez. Director of publicity, so. We're using my out. iPhone to stream to Facebook, and and uh, David Hoffman, our board our board member, just uh, tried to call us on the phone that we're using to stream to Facebook. Sabotage. So. Ah. Well, we will get all of these bugs out. I'm sure that we'll be. Uh, well, bugs are fun. Bugs are fun. Yeah. yeah. Bugs Bunny is a lot of fun. Yeah, and yeah. we'll tell you more about him. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for spending your Sunday afternoon with us, and uh, hopefully. If you guys are excited about it, let us know, and uh, we'd love to help out. So Think about the ideas that you, you'd like to see us do podcasts on, and uh, post them in the comments, and we'll um, definitely uh, uh, get to work on, on giving you great information. Uh, oh, one other thing I want to say before we go. The way our podcasts work is uh, most of them will only be on Facebook for 24 hours, so you have to make sure that you see them in that first day. Once that they're once they're they've reached the 24 hour mark, they turn into a pumpkin and get archived back at the Animation Resources members only page. So there's another reason to join Animation Resources. Our archive of the past month of podcasts is always maintained on the Animation Resources page. So if you can't arrange to be here on a Sunday when I'm doing a screening or or when we have our classes take place or our, our lectures. Um, you can always get them in, at, uh, on the members only page. So um, pay attention to the, to the news groups, uh, or not the news groups, the uh, Facebook groups, and we'll always announce in advance so that you know where to be to, to see it. Uh, but thank you very much for coming, and uh, we're all going to go have dinner now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That's good.